This is the third video in a mini-series about playing classical guitar without nails. There's a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos in this series. You don't have to watch all of them to benefit from any one of them, but if you're interested at all in playing classical guitar or any type of fingerstyle guitar without nails, then I definitely recommend checking all of them out because in part one, we talked about the history of playing classical guitar without nails. In part two, we talked about the trade-offs of nails versus no nails. And in this video, in part three, we are talking about the outlook of playing classical guitar without nails. This video is just something I think is important. Before we get to the technique, we're gonna talk about tactical advice on how to work on the technique of this type of playing in the next video in part four, but we need to adopt the right kind of conviction when working towards this type of playing. Having the right outlook for something like this, having a bigger picture perspective and strategy, something to inform our kind of long game dedication to something like this can make all the difference in the world before just diving in and trying to just go for it and inevitably getting very discouraged. Perseverance is the single biggest determining factor with, well, any endeavor, but especially an endeavor that is an against the grain, against the norm approach or sound like playing classical guitar without nails. That stick to itness, that grit, that determination, that perseverance, that is the factor that is going to determine whether or not we, A, give up because it's hard and it's gonna be hard and the rest of the classical guitar world does not agree with us and we are gonna be influenced by that. Or B, we find our own voice and we learn to enjoy the challenge and we embrace the long game and we thrive in paving a little bit of our own unique path. Yes, I'm talking about classical guitar without nails here because that's what this series is about and that's the process and the challenge that I'm personally transitioning and going through in my classical guitar playing. But take that little nugget there and just apply it to any little unique sparkle of you that is in there. What's something that you might wanna be trying that's a little different? What's something that's against what everyone says is normal or should or shouldn't or all that business when it comes to creativity or your music or your practicing or your sound or whatever, including things I say, if it doesn't feel right for you, find, you can absolutely explore finding your own way, always. So in this video, we are going to look into what makes classical music, classical music. That will be interesting and helpful to define. We are going to answer the question of why there are not more professional classical guitar players out there who play without their nails. And we are going to discuss what it would take. What does it take to sound great on classical guitar without nails? That's what we're gonna talk about. Let's get into it. Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics to help you increase your overall musicianship skills, gain more creative control over music, and express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. So what makes classical music classical music? Of course, we'll think of style and genre and eras and composers and repertoire, but what is the essence of a style of music? What is the ethos of it? What is the spirit? What is the mindset that is adopted for that style of music, for classical music in this case? I actually think that defining genres can be pretty ridiculous and, and meaningless and definitely limiting if we attach onto those and identify with them. So I'm not saying this is the definition of classical music. I'm thinking more abstractly here, but I think it is the approach. I think it is the way of practicing and preparing and listening and, and feeling. I think it is the attention to detail. I think it is the attempt at executing with absolute control and absolute consistency. It's complete intentionality behind every nuance of expression in tone, in timbre, in dynamics, in intonation, in time fluctuations, in every element of it. And yes, when we get that level of control, we can also want to just let go and be swept away and guided by the music. But in practice, we try to have an intimate relationship with going deep on every element of the music that we possibly can. If you work on any kind of music with that 
mentality, I think that we are working on it in a classical practice, in a classical kind of approach. And of course, this is why getting any amount of classical training is so amazingly beneficial for our musicianship in general, so we can apply that heightened level of observation and awareness and deepening our sensibilities for how we are playing and practicing and executing music. And we can apply that then to anything else that we want to do in music. So I had a classical guitar teacher who put on a recital of Thelonious Monk compositions arranged for classical guitar. So he was playing music by one of the most iconic jazz musicians and jazz composers in history. So was he playing jazz music? Well, he wasn't improvising. He was playing on a classical guitar in a recital format with classical guitar technique, and he was a trained classical musician. Even though you could say he was playing jazz compositions, he was very much playing it as a classical musician would, preparing for it as a classical musician would, uh, having all the formalities that a classical musician would. And that's what it sounded like. You could hear all the independent voice leading. It was full kind of clarity, uh, evenness, execution of tone, all of the things that a classical musician would do to prepare for playing whatever kind of music. So this is the mindset I'm talking about. It's the way of preparing and, and practicing and, and being consistent. Now it's odd that I find myself talking about this because ultimately my actual opinion is that none of it matters. It doesn't matter at all. But the, asking that question is, uh, silly in the first place. Uh, we should just, music is music. We should blur the lines anywhere we want, anytime we want. It's all more the same than it is different. So why do I bring this up then? Why are we talking about this? Because when something so surface level, like whether or not you pluck the strings with nails or without nails, when that comes under attack and is seen as not legitimate, we need to know in our heart of hearts what the deepest essence is of the music that we are trying to express and what we're trying to do. And if we can stay connected to that, then we can be immune to that effect of all of the naysayers. Not really immune, because that's quite hard to do, but we can have the deep level of connection that we need to continue on and to find something so incredibly more meaningful than any amount of what gear you use or how you play it or what. If you play classical music and you take it seriously with that intention and with that mindset on a, an electric guitar with effects and distortion, and that's your thing and you do it very, and that is your art and it's not just a gimmick. And people are gonna say, that's not how you do things. But if, it's, if that is the right path for you, then uh, it could be overwhelmingly profound, not only for your own experience, but for someone else that says, Hey, I didn't know that we were allowed to do that. Oh my gosh, this is what I've been waiting for. I went to a guitar workshop put on by the guitarist, Bill Frizzell, and he told his story about how he had this desire for some reason to combine his jazz playing with folk music and that he had teachers and uh, musical authorities in his life that told him, uh, I'm sorry, you can't do that. That is not jazz. That is not, um, sorry, that's not a thing. You, you're not allowed to make that sound. You're not allowed to play folk music, stick to the jazz, you know, whatever version of that. And in the way he told the story, he said that really deeply affected him and that he did, he closed the doors on those visions and he didn't come back to it for some huge amount of time, 10 years, 15 years, something like that. I can't remember the exact number. When he comes back to this sound, it is now the exact combination of flavors that he is known for around the world and now embracing it. it took so long to come back and, and realize, oh, that person that told me not to do that so long ago, they were wrong. This is my sound. This is my voice. This is my path. And I needed to pursue it. And now it clearly uh, was the right thing to do. So this goes for any situation where you maybe are exploring finding your own voice or exploring breaking some conventions or rules that exist already. This is what artists do. You try something because you feel like trying it. And if it felt right, you keep doing that. Or if you change it a little bit, you change it a little bit and you try something else. Every convention and standard today started off originally as something that was 
challenged by the status quo that came before it. When you're going down your own path of some kind or a path that is not just the obvious most trailblazed path that you can just follow and step exactly in someone else's footsteps, when you're doing that, it's absolutely true that early on or even for a while, you're not going to be accessing the vision that you're actually going for. If it's music, it's just maybe not going to sound the way you actually want it to sound, maybe for a while. In my first video of this series, the part one of Classical Guitar Without Nails, where the whole point of doing this is that I'm talking about my transition through this and encouraging others that you can challenge things and do things differently and exploring that for myself. Well, I demonstrated my uh, sound and my technique at the time. That was six months ago now. And uh, someone left a comment just the other day and said, sounds like crap. And when I go back and listen to it, I can hear that, yeah, that's not how I want it to sound yet. That's not the sound that I know is possible yet. Uh, but I absolutely feel what is coming, where it can go, what the possibility is. Uh, and uh, I'm still going that direction and it is getting better. And I get more and more excited about it as, as I do. So I'm kind of documenting that journey here. The point being there that if we don't have a connection to the deeper purpose and the possibilities and the vision, knowing that it might take some time to get there, um, a comment like that can really throw you off. And it definitely bummed me out. I don't like that kind of negativity, but I also feel inspired pretty quickly again, back on track with uh, just the challenge of going towards what I'm trying to go towards here. So what I'm saying here with this series in general is that it's very possible to have a great classical guitar sound without nails. But if it's so possible, why are there not more guitar players that do it? Why aren't there more great professional high end star guitar touring guitar players that play without their nails? I honestly think it's just because there hasn't yet been a wave of players that serve as an example, just, just to be the model for what is possible. The problem is that just most people in the classical guitar world still doubt it. And they doubt it because whenever we hear someone playing without nails, very often it's not at that level that we think of when we think of the great players with nails. Well, this is really interesting because if someone hears someone play without nails and they feel like that is not a high quality playing, whatever, whatever their opinion of it is. Well, if that same execution, that same playing, if that person played with nails, it would be the same, whatever, low quality, lack of uh, attention to detail or dynamics or whatever, you know, whatever's making, some, making someone think that it's subpar, it would still be there. It would still be there if they had nails. It's not like having nails, suddenly you have this high level of playing. No, it takes an immense, immense, immense amount of work and focus and hours and, and attention and study to get to a kind of higher quality level of sound with nails. It takes a lot of work. That's just what everybody is doing. If you did that same type of work and amount of work without nails, then it would be there. The examples would be there. And there are examples, Rob McKillop, who I just interviewed recently. I'm, I, we actually have to redo the interview. I'll put a link in the description to a little clip that I just posted uh, from the first interview that we did. But he's a great example. He's a shining kind of guide in this world online, uh, an expert in playing without nails and, and a scholar on the topic as well. Big influence on me. So he's an example and he comes up when people are talking about this or searching about this, but there aren't a huge amount of examples or, or people or albums out there that people are listening to, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. So these videos are just to help and be a resource for people going towards this so they can find it, so we can work on this together, so we can start to have some examples in the world of how possible it is. And I'm really excited. I'm really into it and going for it. I have a lot of things I focus on, so it's not 100% what I do. So it's moving along slower than if it was the only thing I practiced, but I will be posting some performances of repertoire pieces without nails in the future. So uh, I look forward to getting those out there. Just as a recap from the last couple videos, let's just remember that these things sound different. And if you're doing something slightly different, it might sound slightly different. So even in other genres or instruments or whatever your other music goals are, it, it would be like saying, oh, you're playing with a hand drum, but that's not cool because it doesn't sound like a drumstick. Well, it's not supposed to. It sounds different. It's okay that it sounds different. So it would behoove us to think of this choice of playing without nails as kind of like choosing a slightly different instrument. Like if, I don't know, between 
alto saxophone and tenor saxophone or something like that. It would be r ridiculous to say, hey, one of those is worse because they don't sound like the other one. That's probably you know, a bigger difference than what we're talking about here, but it's just okay that it's not exactly the same thing. Can you make music with it? Can you express yourself? Can you take it seriously? Can you refine your technique or a technique on it? Can you play a broad range of repertoire? I mean, any of these things like, yeah, you can play serious music this way on any instrument, any way you want to approach it. So basically, I just think there is a correlational logical fallacy going on here where if someone hears someone play classical guitar without nails and they think it doesn't sound great, they make the correlation that, oh, it doesn't sound great because they don't have nails. But classical music is hard and takes years and years and years of effort no matter how you go about it. It's just that not enough people have put in that sustained, serious, dedicated, time-consuming hard work over years and years and years that it takes to get control and tone and and expertise and being proficient at an instrument not enough people have done that without nails if and when that happens the people that have done it and if and when it happens more then we will see ah it is just a different way to play guitar equally awesome equally virtuosic for some people and now this is a choice that we have. Do you want to play this way or this way? So the most common question that comes up is what about tremolo? Can you do tremolo? Can you do tremolo without nails? How is that possible? Well, I've been working on it a lot. I've really been working on it and I'm excited to talk about that. I will either talk about it in my ne next video part four that's about the technique or I might do a totally separate video just on tremolo without nails uh, just to show how it's coming along. I'm really enjoying it. It is really different. It's really super fun. Uh, so stay tuned for those technique episodes of this series. Huge shout out to Rob McKillop, who I'm interviewing again later this week. So that you'll hear more from him if you're staying tuned on this series. And also Brandon Acker, who has a huge, amazing YouTube channel. And he has a video about playing without nails that was influential and helpful for me as well. I'm going to link to both of those people and their videos about no nail playing in the description if you want to check out their take on things. If you want some free sheet music to play with, I have a free solo guitar arrangement pack that you can download. There's a link in the top of the description. Actually, there's only two pieces of music in there right now, but I am very soon hoping to be adding more to it. I have a bunch that I need to get to, just need to get around to doing that task. Anyone who does get it, I'll send out an update to you. I'll just email it to you uh, if you download that. So you'll get the update later, uh, but that's gonna be a cool resource that I'm adding to my list of free downloads that I like to give away on this channel. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week is part four of this series where we talk about the actual technique of doing this and I'll share everything I've learned so far, what's working for me, what's not, that kind of thing. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.